So I want to introduce you actually to the audience as Dr. Deborah Kerr. I don't think I've ever called you that. Well, it's because I don't use it very often, yeah. except when I'm in the classroom. So let's tell me a little bit how you got from your PhD into mm -hmm. a startup. If you live in Austin long enough, you're going to own a startup. Really? It's just, yeah. You just sort of you just it's catchy happens. like a virus. Yeah. So it's interesting, you have a, a great background in measurement, and we're going to talk about how measurement sort of intersects with leadership. So tell us a little bit about the name of your company and a little bit about the genesis of Aphintus. Aphintus is uh, a pre-hire assessment technology that enables uh, executives to get the data they need to make a better decision. And the data is, is valid, it's verifiable, and it's unfakeable, um, which is not the case with resumes and interviews. So let's talk about how this whole thing started. Mm -hmm. Dinner party, glass of wine. Okay, one glass? Uh, well, it was by the second glass that we decided to build a company. Okay. And then by dessert, we had it mapped out on a flip chart in my dining room. Okay. And we sat around talking about how difficult it is on so many levels when you've got the wrong people in the wrong job or you make a wrong hire. It can go south so fast. And we were talking about not only the challenge for the decision making, but Paula then chimed in and said, oh, let me just tell you how much that costs in dollars to make that mistake. Does she actually that. quantify that? Yeah. Oh yeah, so she's got you... like 44 items, cost items. And if you fill those in, you get a sense of the cost to hire. And, and hers even includes uh, the ramp up time. I mean, you walk in the door and it's gonna take you six months for most jobs. For manager and senior jobs, it's 18 months to two years to really figure out what the company needs and what you need to bring to the company. Whether it's a good fit? Yeah, yeah. When so it's a good fit, it's still gonna take two yeah, years. Yeah, so let's just talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So it takes some amount of time to actually get yes. them in the door. Yes. Then once you're in the door, you have you're to- You're not productive. For some period of time. Yeah. And then if you are being ushered, ushered out the door. Sunk costs. <laughs> there's Gone. another chunk of time. So if you add, so is, that, is that essentially what she was adding up? Yes. Was that I'm trying yes. to quantify? Yes, she included that, okay. the ramp up time to productivity, um, as well as hard costs. So there's this guy who's doing research on CEOs and, and their awareness of the people part. And he was in New York at, at a World Bank conference and there were 4,000 people in the audience. And he said, all right, y'all, how many of you, 4,000, have ever studied and learned about how to bring people into the organization? 20 people. Out of 4,000? 20 people. Okay. Raise their hands. So there's a knowledge gap that's important, but most of us think we are human beings so we can handle the human being part pretty well. I mean, the classic way to hire is, you know, resume, references, people that you know, there's job experience, and so if you've been good at Starbucks, you'll probably be good at the next coffee shop, right? I mean, at some level. So mm -hmm. talk, talk to me a little bit about what needs to change. Okay, so experience. People look at a resume and say, oh, this is what you've done. And they ascribe some set of knowledge to that. Now remember that there are all kinds of people making money fixing up your resume so that the manager is going to be attracted to it. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing is fixing up the resume and not really revealing who you are and what your strengths are. So okay. that's one. We also know that that resumes, uh, people lie on their resumes. And Come apparently, on. I know. Yeah. I can't and imagine that. And a lot of people lie on their resumes. Huh? There's been a, a number of research studies done and it ranges between 30% and 80% of people have fudged on their resume. Change a job title, change the number of years, change sure. a Human little nature, bit of I guess, the Well, that for, and, and for everybody on, everything on the web says, oh, <laughs> fix your resume to look like the job because yeah. that will get you the job. Yeah. Well, it might get you the job, but the manager hiring you does not get data that's useful.